Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Sara Taysir. I'm a pediatrics and neonatology consultant and healthcare consultant at uh, MedSynapse Medical Platform. Today, I'm pleased to have uh, Dr. Haysam Saar as my dear guest on my podcast. Dr. Haysam Saar is an international cardiology consultant working at uh, Dalla Namar Hospital in Saudi Arabia. Welcome, doctor. Hi, Sarah. How is you? All is good. So today, I doctor, like we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, uh, which is heart failure. Let me first start about uh, knowing more about you and your medical background before going uh, deeply into heart failure. Um, well, thank you. And it's very nice to be with you here today um, you. in this podcast. Um, uh, my name is Haysan Sok. I am an interventional cardiology consultant working right now in Dalanamar Hospital. Uh, this is one of the biggest private hospitals in Saudi Arabia. Um, I've been uh, privileged to have been trained here in Saudi Arabia as well, starting my journey back in 2008. Um, I got the other cardiology fellowship and the intervention cardiology fellowship in uh, Prince Sultan Cardiac Center um, at the Prince Sultan Literary Medical City, uh, following which I started my journey as a cardiology consultant uh, from 2014 up till now. Great experience. So, doctor, let me uh, first start with what's heart failure and how does it differ from a normal heart attack? Well, there is a great difference between heart failure and the uh, heart attack. Um, let's say that the heart failure is inability of the heart muscle to pump efficient blood in order to meet the patient's uh, daily requirements. Um, this entails that those patients were um, uh, subconsciously uh, uh, decrease their effort tolerance in order to meet those lower and lower demands. Uh, while a heart attack is, in, in general, is a blockage of one or more of the coronary arteries. Um, resulting in what we call in medical terms myocardial infarction. So okay. um, in, other, in other terms, we can say that mm -hmm. heart attack is maybe one of the major causes of, uh, of heart failure where the, other, where the other thing or the vice versa is not true. So heart failure is inability of the bump to bump blood, in the inability of the heart muscle to bump the blood while the heart attack is just blockage of one or more of the coronary arteries. Okay, and what are the stages of heart failure? I know that there, there are um, different stages, so... Please. Yes, sir. According to the American College of Cardiology guidelines in uh, 2022, um, there are four stages of heart failure, namely A, B, C, and D. Uh, we can say that stage A is, um, they call it the patient at risk. Um, those patients, they don't actually have a typical structural um, uh, heart disease or, or something wrong with their heart, but they are at risk. Those obese patients, those who lead a sedentary lifestyle, diabetic, hypertensive, uh, those who smoke or drink. Well, um, risk factors. Um, Exactly. So, so those having risk factors, but they still don't have any actual heart disease. Yeah. This moves us to stage B or pre-heart failure. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it in the American uh, College of Cardiology guidelines. Um, those who have already um, a, a heart problem, whether it's congenital or acquired, whether it's related to a heart muscle problem or to coronary artery disease, um, um, uh, for example, and um, those patients are still asymptomatic which means that they have the disease, but they did not have, they don't have the symptoms yet. Yes. Stage C or the symptomatic heart failure are those patients who start to develop symptoms based on the severity or the depression of the heart uh, muscle pumping function or the LV junction fraction, mm -hmm. um, whether it's be shortness of press, uh, lower limb edema, ascites, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the final stage, uh, which is the advanced heart failure or the critical uh, heart failure, those patients are typically um, not able to lead a normal uh, uh, life at all. Most of the time, they are uh, uh, dependent on intropic support, um, recurrent hospitalizations. They may be, even if they are eligible, put on um, a transplantation list um, uh, in order to improve their survival and prognosis. Okay, and this takes me to the next question. Uh, what are the symptoms of heart failure? How do I know that I might have now a heart failure? Um, well, heart failure is, is, a, is either a left heart failure, which is more common and we see in day-to-day -day practice, or a right-side heart failure, or a combination of both. Okay. And it depends whether you are having what we call forward symptoms, or symptoms related to the inefficient pumping of the heart, or a backward symptoms, which is related to stagnation of blood in the, uh, in the circulation. So, the most common symptoms of heart failure, the ones that bring the patients, mostly either the uh, OBD, where we see them in the clinics, or uh, God forbid, to the ER, where the, the really sick is uh, dyspnea. And um, um, uh, shortness of breath or dyspnea is classified according to the New York Heart Association into four stages, where in stage A, the patient is able to lead a normal lifestyle, but is unable to do uh, more than normal daily activities. Yes. This is where he gets uh, short of breath. 
Stage two, he developed short soft press on um, a normal daily activities. Stage three, and less than um, a normal daily activities. And stage four, where the patient develops dyspnea at rest. Yes. Um, um, the backwards symptoms result from a congestion, whether it's in the lungs or in the uh, right side of the body. Ascites, for example, lower limb edema. Uh, this is, of course, a, a package coming with inability uh, of the patient to lead the normal daily activity, normal daily life. Um, uh, muscle pains, aches, sometimes um, cardiac area, among others. Okay, and how do we diagnose the heart failure, especially for new doctors? If you can advise them how they can uh, diagnose the heart failure. Uh, once the patient starts having symptoms, we will uh, we will see them typically in one of two scenarios: whether the patient is coming to the clinic, or if he's in pulmonary edema, he will come to the to the emergency department. We we start by taking patient um, history. Um, dig deep into more details, uh, know about the patient geographics, the background history, whether the patient is having any comorbid conditions like diabetes, hypertension, etc., etc., whether the patient is having any drinking abnormalities, any uh, if he's a smoker, for example, or something like this. Um, then we go to examination after obtaining enough history. It's uh, both general and cardiac examination, and this, this is followed by investigations. We order the basic blood labs, the uh, urea electrolytes, kidney function tests, uh, liver function test, then we order the uh, iron study, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, and then the most important blood lab for us is BNB or pro BNB, which uh, help us in the diagnosis or exclusion of heart failure as a cause of patient symptoms. Um, this is typically followed by ECG and imaging, mainly uh, transthoracic echocardiography. Very informative, doctor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what are the available treatment for heart failure, including medication, lifestyle moderation, etc.? Um, actually, uh, uh, there should be a heart failure team or a heart team in order to deal with those kind of patients, yeah. um, especially that uh, we tell the patient that it's a balance between uh, amount of fluids coming in and the amount of fluids we are able to get out. Um, uh, as long as you're on the net side or what we call net balance mm -hmm. or on the negative side, you're okay. But if there is any dietary indiscretion, especially in salt and water, Mm -hmm. and and you, um, and you start to accumulate fluids typically it takes something between seven to ten days where we will see the patient either in the clinic or in the um, in the emergency department so the most important thing about lifestyle modification or diet let's say is keep the balance between what's coming in and what's going out um, exercise is very important the american college of cardiology and the american uh, college of sports medicine advise everybody to walk for half an hour a day five days a week Okay. Just a little bit according to your demands and needs and don't start right away with half an hour. <laughs> yes. You can start with two, three minutes, five minutes and tell it according to your, uh, to your response. Okay. Um, rehabilitation team is very important. And then we come to the mainstay of our uh, approach, which is medical treatment. We have a group of medicine, uh, which we advise the patient to take on regular basis. Um, this starts with diuretic, of course, in order to relieve the patient's condition followed by S inhibitors, uh, slash ARP, slash ARNI, which has been in the, in the market for a few years now, beta blockers, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, and the new kid on the block, which has been there for uh, a couple of years, maybe a little bit more, and has been introduced recently into the guidelines, which is the uh, sodium glucose uh, transporter inhibitor 2, the flozin family, the imbaflozin, the yabaflozin, and the kind of flozin. Yeah. And, and then, of course, we monitor the patient as he progresses in the disease. We may uh, insert some uh, assist devices. We uh, the patient may, may have to come in for a short stay in the hospital, a few days, in order he to yeah. receive inotropic support or to uh, increase to get uh, intravenous diuretic. And eventually, the patient will, ha will have to be put on the transplant list if the uh, muscle is very weak and he's eligible for uh, for that kind of treatment. Okay, doctor. And after, uh, if a patient with heart failure was diagnosed as heart failure and was kept in the hospital for a few days and then he uh, left the hospital, uh, how many times does he have to follow up uh, with the doctor? Because sometimes I see patients when they go out of the hospital, they forget completely about uh, revisiting uh, the doctor for advice or for follow up. So uh, how well, do you advise? This, them? I think this is, but uh, uh, on the doc doctor, but with the doctor himself and the part on the patient. If, if yeah. the uh, doctor sits down with the patient while in hospital and explains the disease completely and ensure that the patient understand the severity and the gravity of this condition, how frequently should follow up and the importance of adherence to medication, keeping the fluid balance and 
losing weight if he's obese. Um, these, all these things would be required in order to improve patient adherence and compliance to medication. Typically, um, in Dalamar Hospital, we see the patient within one week of discharge, then maybe after another couple of weeks, and, even, and, uh, and then every one to two months thereafter, according to the patient condition, and they need to upscalate or upgrade his medication. Yes. Okay, and doctor, what do you think about some doctors advising some patients with heart failure or, or who had attacks with heart failure to continue on smoking? Because this is something common we see in Egypt that instead of advising the people who smoke to stop, no, if you cannot stop it, uh, you can continue. I want to know your opinion about that. We would never uh, say that smoking is allowed or, or that you <laughs> should continue smoking. We should stress in each and every visit, especially while the patient is in hospital, because they tend to listen more to you. Yeah. That smoking is, is, is harmful to you. Right. Uh, if smoking is not directly related to the heart failure, it will eventually cause some sort of trouble and increase your, uh, your, uh, your risk of having heart failure. For example, yeah. smoking is a risk factor for heart attack, the one we have been um, mentioning okay. earlier in our conversation. Um, you continue to smoke, you may have a heart attack. This will increase the, uh, the burden in your muscle, which is already weak. Smoking will cause definitely some sort of lung problems. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say um, uh, COPD, um, just to mention a few. Again, this will decrease your effort tolerance and will let you go more frequently and more easily into dyspnea, visit the ER for medication, and so on and so forth. This is apart from the bad, uh, <laughs> uh, let's say, the effects of smoking on other parts yeah. of the body, which was... Uh, this is not, not the right time or place to start uh, mentioning it. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. And this answers actually my next question, question which was about how heart failure affects uh, or impacts a patient's life. So this you answered now that, uh, yeah, it, uh, heart failure is not an easy disease. So we have to take care about our it, lifestyle and, our, and moderate it. To, yeah. Yes, you're right. Yes. The patient has to understand that this is a chronic disease. At the end of the day, he has to live with it. Some of those patients even uh, uh, get depression, especially yeah. new, newly diagnosed patients with heart failure. Um, and, the, and, and here comes the importance of family support and the rehabilitation programs and the supporting staff, whether in the hospital or outside the hospital, the nursing care, if the patient is living in a nursing home or yeah. in a hospice or any other facilities like this. And doctor, do you think that now we can see young adults having heart failure more than the past years? Because I guess this is something common, or maybe in Egypt we have been uh, seeing this, that young adults get uh, heart attacks, uh, get anginal pain, chest pain frequently, and this was not the case years ago. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say it's a surprise. The trend is rising, as you rightly said. Um, the, the main idea is that we, we are commonly seeing now patients with congenital heart disease um, than we used to see in the past. This mm -hmm. is partly due to the advances in, in, in cardiac intervention, which allows us allow those patients to lead normal or almost normal uh, uh, life to a certain age where they start develop symptoms again and in the past we didn't have those uh, kind of technology to treat yeah. those patients but these patients as well are leading what we call the westernized lifestyle yes. um, taking junk food from the streets drinking smoking sometimes even taking illegal drugs which will af eventually affect their heart at a younger age than we used to see in uh, in, in the past um these are uh, I think one of the of, of main reasons why we, we tend to see rising um, uh, uh, percentage of patients or rising number of patients who are typically young uh, having heart attacks, heart failure, among others. Yes. Okay. So, doctor, what emotional challenges do people with heart attack or heart failure often face? Um, usually, uh, it's something like somebody who used to do everything in an independent way, lead his normal lifestyle, can drive his car, can walk to, in the garden or the park, can go to the gym. And then all of a sudden, he got a heart attack, and then he developed a, um, a, a lower ejection fraction, heart failure. He's no longer able to lead the normal lives. And um, as we mentioned earlier, um, those patients tend to decrease their effort or mm -hmm. decrease the, the the normal routine in order to get the Disney. Because this tells them you are okay. You don't you don't need to go to the doctor. Yes. It's fine. It's just normal aging process. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about it. Yes. So. Some percentage, it's quite an, an alarming percentage, by the way, develop this denial uh, attitude uh, followed by depression. Yeah. At some stage, they may need to see a psychiatrist in order to, to, uh, to help them cope with this uh, uh, disease and the diagnosis 
and to understand, as we said, that it's a chronic disease. You just need to uh, to understand how to deal with it in order to lead a normal lifestyle. You don't need to uh, decrease your uh, your daily routine activities or the amount of time you're spending in the gym or the, mm. um, uh, uh, the number of days you're exercising. You just need to understand uh, your disease process and tailor your activity. Yes, this is very important, yes. Okay, doctor, I was pleased to have you today at MedSynapse uh, podcast. Looking forward for another podcast with you. It was very, very informative. So uh, I would like to thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I hope the audience enjoyed the conversation. Definitely. Thank you. Doctor. Have a great thank day. You.